Alright guys, the last video for this evening is going to be going over how to display quantitative data. So, um, just reiterating what I was showing in the previous videos, rather than typing in all the series of commands again, we get a file, open script, we get a desktop, and I'm going to open up the data script, and that is where I have saved all the work that we've done so far. So I could run through everything that we did in the previous videos very quickly. Now, I don't need to run through all of them. But I do need to run through a few of them. Anytime we uh, go through and we want to work with a data set, so I've opened up the script. Now, if I come over here and I type in, uh, uh, for example, if I come down here and I want to do a bar plot of F tab and I hit Control R, it's going to say F tab was not found. Well, that's because up here in the previous line we named F tab. So then we'd go up here and we would have to hit Control R and it would say, well, type was not found. That's because we have not attached any of our data. So if you want to go through and do this, you have to go through all of these or all of these commands in order again. So we always need to run the get working drive command. We're going to change it to desktop. So we're going to run the next command, which is the set working drive. And then we want to get our data. My data was the district topology data. If you use a different data set, if you have another data set, you just change what you named it and change the file that you're reading the DISTYP. Other than that you leave the rest of the command the same and it will just pick up the new file and then you change your DISTYP in all of these lines here and it'll run through the same commands but with a different file. We've set the working drive so now we'll run the next line we'll check our data we will attach our data we'll get the names of our data. Now the rest of this and then we can do the mean of median income just to verify that it does read our data so now the rest of this was displaying qualitative data we don't need to run through all that but these first commands the get the set get working drive set working drive naming the data and telling R to read it viewing the data to make sure there's no mistakes attaching the data getting the names of the data that way you remember what you're working with and then using some kind of quantitative value to check your work uh, all of these must be ran each time you open up a data set before you go through any other commands so, um, one thing I want to show you guys over here is, if you want to do um, 3 times 4, you can type in 3 times 4 into this, and it will calculate it for you. If you want to do um, 3 divided by 4, if you want to do 12 minus 6, it will do all basic arithmetic. So, if you want to do uh, 3 to the 4th power, it will do all basic arithmetic, just like you would if you were typing this stuff into uh, my open math. So, um, just something to show you, but what we're going to focus on today is, or in this video, is displaying quantitative data. Okay, so uh, typically when we display quantitative data, we use histograms. So, the first thing we're going to go over is just the commands for histograms. So, uh, remember, if I do a uh, is factor topology and I run that, it's currently reading, it says false. So, that's saying is it's not reading typology as a factor, meaning it's not reading it as a categorical variable, it's reading it as a numerical variable. But we know that the typologies, which were labeled 1 through 8, those numbers were just being used to represent categories. So we don't want to do any calculations with that. We know that type is um, we know that type is a factor. So if we do is factor type, it'll tell us true. So that's saying that R is reading this uh, column, the type column, the rural, the suburban, small town, and suburban. It's reading that as a categorical data. Now if I come in here and type in is factor and then it's median income. It's going to say false. The fact that it says false means that it's reading it as numerical data. So, um, one thing you want to do is, is when you're trying to display quantitative data, is just take a second and make sure R is reading it as quantitative data. And the fact that it says false means it's not categorical, therefore, it is reading it as quantitative. So, uh, very easy command for a histogram. It is 
hist, H-I-S-T, of whatever you want to take the histogram of, so median income. We're going to run that command, and we get a histogram. Now, it's not in color. If we want to put in color, we can add color. We can add labels. Uh, you can see it's already made labels. Uh, but we can go in and we can change the labels. We can change the x-axis label to whatever we wanted, the y label to whatever we wanted, and the title to whatever we wanted. Using the same commands that we did with the bar graph, we can add collar using a bar graph, uh, just like we did with the bar graph. But uh, one thing I want to show you is, is, you can see is it breaks it up into so many pieces, but it didn't give you an option to break it up. So what we can come over here and do is, is we can do minimum of median income, maximum of median income, and then we'll run these two commands. And so if we take these two values, the maximum, 73,125, and I subtract 17,910, I get approximately 55,215. Now if we look at this, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So they used 12 classes when they created the histogram. You can create a di histogram differently. So um, let's say you want to create a histogram with, um, oh, let's say you want to create a histogram that has 8 classes. So what you're going to do is, is you can do range of median income, control R, and it's going to give you the high and the low value. So then to figure out class width, class width is range divided by number of classes. So uh, we can do max of median income minus min of median income and we'll come over here and we'll name this uh, range so we'll name this range and then hit control R and if we type in range if we type in the word range and then hit control R it'll tell us what our range is and then if we do range divided by, let's say we want eight classes. So let's say we want eight classes. So we'll do range divided by eight, and then we'll run that command, and it'll tell us uh, 55,215 divided by eight is 6901.875. Now we can also come over here and just type it in as a division problem. 55215 divided by 8. And we'll get the same answer. Okay, so uh, what I'm getting at is, is if you want to create a histogram with a n different number of classes, so instead of having 12 bars, we only wanted to use 8, then what we would do is we would come in here and we'd have to add breaks. So, to add specific breaks, use the command breaks equals sequence minimum value maximum value by equals class width. So for this one, it's going to be breaks equals the sequence that starts with the minimum which was 17,910, goes to the maximum, which was 73,125, by, and we want to use a class width of 6,901.875. And then we hit Control R. That runs that command. And then now we're going to do a histogram of median income using breaks. So this is going to create a histogram get rid of this F, of median income, and it's going to use the breaks that we just explained in the line above. So then we run that command, and we should go here, and we'll see that we have 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we have a histogram that only has eight bars. If we wanted to add bars, we would do the same thing. Now, sometimes it won't give you the exact number of bars that you're asking for if you're dealing with a relatively small data set. But since we're dealing with 609 school districts, we have a relatively large data set. All right, so that's a histogram. And then, lastly, we're going to go over how to create an ogive. Okay, so to do an ogive, you have to use the breaks command. So let's do uh, breaks equals sequence 17,910 to 73,125 by 6,901.875. Okay, so something to maybe make note of is you must have a breaks command. Now guys, if you want to go in here and break this up and differently, instead of doing say 6,901.875, let's see you want to go in here and you want to do by 5,000. Then you could just come in here and you can name this breaks 2, like a different set of breaks. You don't want to use the same title more than once if you're changing it because the computer won't know which breaks to read, the first one or the second one you typed in. So if we name it breaks, breaks 2 and we just do by 5,000, we could do it that way. All right. And then we're going to do what's called the cut command, which says we're going to cut, so we're going to name it cut, equals, we're going to cut our median income using the breaks that I just typed up, so breaks 2, and I'm going to put right equals false. Right equals false means that if a data point is in the right hand side of the interval, it does not include it in that interval. It throws it into the next class. Okay, so we're going to run these commands. So, so we run the cut command. Then we're going to create a frequency table. So, freak. And we're going to create a frequency table of our cuts. And we're going to run that. And then we can check this. So we can then type in a REQ and then run that line and it's going to tell us the uh, 1.79 e to the fourth means uh, 17,900 and so on and so forth um, and it will tell us how many is in each so then we'll go in here and we will do uh, we want to create a cumulative frequency and that's going to be um, equal to the data set that starts at zero and it represents the cumulative summation of frequency. So, we have the cumul so we're going to be doing the cumulative summation com can command because an ogive is a cumulative frequency graph. So that's the cumulative frequency command. And then we're going to plot the breaks and the cumulative frequency of each. So now running up through here, we're going to run this command and we're going to plot this command. And it's saying that we have a uh, difference. Hmm. Okay, I'm believing the issue might be with our breaks. So um, let's go up here and change this back to 6901.875. And then let's get rid of the breaks too and just change this back to just breaks. And then let's run through these commands again. So we're going to do Control R, Control R, Control R. Control R, Control R, Control R, Control R. There we go. Now we see that we've created a dot graph of all the cumulative frequencies. Now the ogive that we created by hand had all these dots connected with lines. So if we want to do that then, we have to add lines, breaks, cumulative frequency. And then when we run this command, it's now going to go in and add a line to our graph. 
Now on our plot, if we want to add a title, we can just do main uh, equals quote ogive. Run that command, and now ogive pops up at the top. If we wanted to add some color, we can do color equal C uh, parentheses. We want our dots to be red. Now we go here, our dots are red. Now say we want to go in and we want to create our lines. We want them to have a color that is uh, blue. So we would type in that we want the color blue. We'd run that command. And now we can see we've created an ogive where we have uh, the dots that are in red and the uh, line is in blue. Alright, and that is all the ways that we're going to display quantitative data using the R package. So hopefully this video made sense to you and hasn't been too boring. Um, I would suggest trying to go through and run through a data set without the uh, R commands in front of you and see if you can remember how, ma how many of them you can remember. I would maybe take time to write all these down on paper. Also. Okay, so in this video guys, we're going to... If for some reason you were to accidentally lose your R editor page, you would lose all of this information. So I would recommend taking the time to write this stuff down on a separate sheet of paper or just take this and print it off. You have the option to print over here on the right hand side. So just print off your R editor list and then that way you always have access to it uh, even when you are uh, going to different data sets. And then that way uh, this might make more sense than uh, just looking at the R commands that I'm going to hand you in class. But then also you always have access to these videos if that's something that you would like to do also. You can always just go back and rewatch the videos. Alright, see you guys later.